Today we're going to learn how to add a reflection into sunglasses. So you're going to go to adding reflections to sunglasses folder. Open up both of the pictures. We're going to try to add a reflection of the beach scene into this girl's sunglasses. But as you do it, if you think about it, there are so many um, creative things you can do with this depending on who's wearing the sunglasses and what you want them to look at. So be thinking of some creative, creative ways you can use this tool. Okay, so if you look closely, you can see that there's already a faint reflection in her sunglasses. Um, it kind of looks like she might be standing on the side of the road. So she could just as easily have been standing on a tropical beach. So we're going to try to make it look like that's what she's doing. All right, first thing you want to do is use the selection tool. And you're going to create a selection of, we'll start with the left side of her glasses, her right side. So you're going to choose quick selection tool. Um, I'm going to make the size a bit smaller. And just select right there on the inside. I need to zoom in so that I can make sure that your selection is good. Make sure that your selection is good. Let me change the size down a bit. I'm just going to start over. Okay. Once you have a decent selection, what you're going to do is create a new layer. And we're not going to make a copy of this layer. We're just going to start with a blank layer. We've not done this much, so I'll show you how to do it. Down here under the layers palette, you're going to choose this blank piece of paper. It's got a corner turned up. That makes a new layer. And you can see if you turn the background off, there's nothing on this layer. It's just a transparent layer. Okay, the reason we want to have this selection made and we want to go to this new layer is we're going to paint it black. Um, so there's a, there's a shortcut to do this. If you want to press D on your keyboard, the letter D, that will set your um, background and foreground colors to the default, which is black and white. All right, whoops, I did not mean to do that. Now what we're going to do is fill it, this selection, with black on layer 1. So there's a couple ways to do that, and there's a shortcut. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to choose the paint bucket tool and just fill it with black. Okay, so now we have a black selection. And if you look on layer 1, you can take the eyeball off of the background. Make sure that it's only on layer 1 that you did not paint on the background. Okay, let's do Control d to deselect what we have selected. And we're going to double click layer one right here on the words that say layer one because we want to rename this because we're going to have several layers and we, want, we don't want to get confused. We'll just name this left lens and then press enter. Okay, now we're going to go over to our beach photo, choose our move tool, click and drag it to bring it over. Okay, now what I want you to do is double click the hand so that everything fits on one screen. And let's go ahead and rename this layer also. This is going to be the reflection of the left lens, so we're just going to double click on layer one and name this left reflection. And if you don't spell it right, that's okay. This, it's for your information only. Obviously, we don't want this picture covering up the whole screen. So what we're going to do is right click and we're going to make this a clipping mask. And you know that a clipping mask is going to clip to the layer underneath it what's not transparent. Well, you know that the only thing that's not transparent is the lens. So when we do a clipping mask on this thing, right click, create clipping mask, it's going to go straight to the lens. Now what we can do is we can kind of move it around. And we can also resize it. Let's go ahead and size it down just a little bit. Remember we have to hit the link. Once you hit that link, Please make sure that you're resizing from the corners and not the top and the bottom because if you do the top or the bottom, you're still shrinking things. See, it's 57 wide by 32 high. So click the link and I'm just going to resize it a little bit because I want to be able to see the ocean and a little bit of the tree. Okay, so I'm going to leave mine like that. Okay, I'm going to make my background layer visible again. And now what I want to do is add a inner shadow, a text effect to the left lens layer. So you're going to go to the left lens layer. Now we've done, not text effect, but um, layer effects. We've done layer styles on text, but we're going to do it on a layer now. So if you're going to click down here on the FX and let's add an inner shadow. So click on inner shadow. It'll pull this up. It's already selected for you. And 
Let's change the size to about 3, the distance to 1. Let's do the angle at about 65 degrees. And then hit OK. Okay, once you've added effects, you can see it on that layer. And you can click the eyeball beside the effects to turn them off and on to see how it changed. So right now our image is completely flat, but you can see that lenses typically are rounded a little bit. So we're going to add a spherize effect to this. The first thing we need to do is select the left lens, the part of the lens, not the entire layer. So we're going to hold down control on our keyboard, and then you're going to click on the picture that says left lens, and you'll see that it will select this. The reason we do this is because when we add um, the spherize effect, it will it'll do it only to what we have selected and not the entire layer. Now you want to click on the left reflection picture, which is the picture of the um, ocean. We don't want to do the spherize to the black part because really there's nothing there. I mean, you won't be able to tell. Um, the picture is what we want to be curved. So you're going to click on left reflection, but make sure that you have the lens selected. All right, now you're going to go up to filter, and then you go to distort, and then spherize. Okay. The more curved it is, the more you'll spherize something. So when you look at the slider here, you can tell what's happening on the picture. It's kind of going concave as you go negative, and it's going um, kind of bubbled out as you go up. So first we want to change this to horizontal only. Okay. And then we want it to be about 30%. You won't be able to tell a big difference but it's the small things that make it look more realistic. So once you're done, horizontal only, 30%, you'll hit OK, and it'll spherize just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to add some more effects to this left reflection, but we don't want to touch, whoops, what did I just do? Oh, control C. We don't want to, um, I'm going to control D to deselect. We don't want to touch the, the left reflection layer, so we're just going to make a copy of this layer. You're going to control J, It'll make an exact copy of the left reflection layer. And then you're going to right click and create a clipping mask because we want it to go right on top of the other one. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is change the mode up at the top. It's on normal currently. If you play around with the different modes, you'll see how it affects it. But let's go ahead and change it to multiply. And it makes it darker. If you find that this makes it too dark, you can just go to the opacity of that layer and decrease the opacity a little bit. I think around 80% is good. Okay, and lastly, we want it to look a little more believable. The sun is shining on her face, so we need a little bit of a lens flare right here. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. We're gonna do it this way today, and tomorrow we might do it differently. But we're gonna add a blank layer. So click down at the bottom, choose your blank layer. Um, we're going to select the lens again, so we're going to hold down control on our keyboard and click on this left lens layer so that it selects just the selection of the left lens. And then we're going to do a white to transparent gradient on this picture. One way to do that, by the way, go back to layer one, and we can just, we can call this, um, glare. That way we'll know what it is. Um, we're going to go to where the paint bucket is right click and go to gradient tool. We're going to choose the gradient tool and we want a white to transparent. So let's make white our foreground color by clicking on these arrows here so that white is the main color. And then you're going to click and choose the second option which looks like it's white and then it goes to transparent. And it's currently set on um, this first option which is what you want it. And then we're going to start in the top right hand corner because it looks like the sun's probably coming from here. So if you would just follow the sun down, it would hit it here first. And then we're going to go down, not quite halfway. You see how it adds that um, reflection there? Now, if it's too much, then you can just decrease the opacity a little bit to make it a little more believable. But Control D, I'm going to zoom out. If I had done a better job selecting this to begin with and there weren't jagged edges, it would look much better. Okay, we're going to do the same steps on the second lens, but first let me show you 
how to select the second lens so that it doesn't look as bad as this first lens. All right, we're going to click on our selection tool. I'm going to zoom in, Control plus. I'm going to click on the minus sign to get out what I don't want out. I mean, what I don't want in there. And then, um, I'll click the plus sign again. Remember how we learned how to do the refine edge? There's a couple things you can do in Refine Edge. So go ahead and click Refine Edge. And let's make it a little smoother. You can increase the smooth there. And then hit OK. All right, so we still just have a selection. So remember the next step, we're going to make a blank layer. Let's drag it up to the top. We'll rename this Right Lens. Make sure you're on the right lens layer. We're going to click on the paint bucket, fill it with black. We're going to go to our beach photo, click on the move tool. I probably should have deselected. Let me deselect. Control D. Um, go to our beach photo, drag it over. We're going to clipping mask. I'm going through this quickly. Now, of course, you're going to resize this, use your link. We don't want any of the beach showing, any of the ocean showing now because the ocean should be down here, right? Even with that. So you can just choose another part that you think might show up there. Make it a little bit smaller. Okay, and now we're going to go back and spherize this, but first we have to control select right lens. You're going to get a layer one, filter, distort, um, sphere eyes, horizontal only, 30%. Hit OK. All right, let's make a copy of that. So Control J. I had that still selected, so I don't even have to do a clipping mask. It just made an exact copy of what I had selected, but I'll do a clipping mask anyways. All right, let me call this right reflection. Right, reflection, copy. All right, remember we're going to do this on multiply. Decrease the opacity a little bit. Okay, we're going to go back to our right lens. Add a text effect. Or not, I call it text effects, but it's just a layer effect. Um, inner shadow. The settings, some of the settings are still there from last time. This is supposed to be y, one pixel and three pixels on the size. And we hit OK. OK, and what's left? To make a blank layer, add that same gradient. Right, well, we have to select our right lens again. Hold down Control, click on the right lens layer. Go to layer one. This will be glare, right glare. Switch your foreground and background color. Click on the gradient tool. Make sure you have the right thing selected here and here. We're going to kind of do it the same place, about three quarters of the way in. Control D. I'm going to double click on the magnifying glass to make it full size and see how it looks. If it's too obvious, which I think it kind of is, you can select the, um, the, the palm trees or whatever your background is going to be and decrease the opacity of all of them. Okay, 